So I just finished reading The Lost Metal by Brandon Sanderson, and here's what I think. So this is the fourth book in the Mistborn Era 2. Technically, it's the seventh book in the Mistborn series, it's not counting Secret History and all the other short stories in Arcanum and Bounded. So if you haven't read any of the, or all of the previous books beforehand, Proceed with caution, because this is going to contain some spoilers, mostly from Era 1, and a little bit of, like, Era 2, but not from this book. So, this book is set a few years after the events of the Bands of Mourning, which I immediately love because it adds an air of mystery. You know, you're curious, what are these people up to now? Like, how their characters, or, like, their personalities, or their relationships with each other have changed and also made the first few chapters of just catching up with the characters really satisfying. So what do I look for in a finale for a series? Or in this case, um, a finale of an era of a series. Wrap ups, tie up those loose ends. Now, thankfully, none of the wrap ups or the tying of loose ends in this book was done maladroitly. They were all perfectly executed. Like some of the questions that I had from the first book were even answered in this book. So just like in Mistborn Era 1, there is some courtroom drama in here. So think Well of Ascension because there's a lot of politics involved in this book. Now there are probably a few things that I could nitpick or if I try really hard, I could point out a few things that didn't work extremely well for me, but I'm not going to do that because that would be me forcing myself to find things I hate in something that I love so much and just to appear unbiased. And honestly, I'm the exact type of person that this story, these characters, the, the plot and like the mechanics of the magic, I'm the exact type of person that this is for. Like this works so well for me as a reader. And I'm sure like this is not a perfect book. There aren't really that many perfect books out there. But to me, this is an awesome book and I really love it. So I love how this book makes me feel like while reading it and the way they talk about like the characters from era one, because you know, they're like legends in this book. So Vin as the ascendant warrior, Ellen that's the last emperor. And like they have like these events that happen in like Mistborn, like era one like uh, the flight of destiny and it makes you feel like okay relax i was there it was no flight of destiny it was awesome but it was no flight of destiny so i love how that made you feel like you're like this ancient being in the world because you have witnessed those things one thing though that i would say is it took me a while to fall in love with era 2 and maybe it's because i read it so soon after era 1 that I I still sort of had like this hangover from uh from Vin and Ellen and all them other dudes. But so Alloy of Law, I did not like it very much. Alloy of Law. I don't know, I was a little disappointed. But Shadows of Silence and Bands of Mourning were amazing. Now I think Steris and Waxilium are like a very well written couple. I love the the banter, the chemistry, and the way they act like a well-oiled machine. Because they have to be my favorite romance couple of, like, all time. Not just in Cosmere, but probably in all the books that I've read. I love the contrast in their characters, their personalities, but also, like, how despite that, they work so well together. And none of their moments felt nauseating at all. Um, as much as I love Ellen and Vin, because they were younger characters, so in Mistborn Era 1, while I was reading it, there were like a few moments in there where I was like, oh, that's that's a little young. <laughs> that felt like a young love. You know what I'm saying? But this, they're like um, very chill, very awesome, and uh, I love their scenes together. So Era 2 did a fantastic job in introducing new mechanics and uh, elements when it comes to metallurgy or, or like create creative ways to use uh, these powers without diminishing the immense power of like the people from era one had. The world building has always been amazing. Like the religion, the cultures, 
that are being practiced in this uh, timeline or in this time in the book and how it relates to past events from era one, I, I find that astounding. And even like ju the little bits and pieces that, or little Easter eggs and clues that you find in this book from like different Cosmere, Cosmere related events is just awesome. I, I don't know, there's a lot of Easter eggs in this book. So one of my favorite things when it comes to Brandon Sanderson's books are like the religions and how he's able to explore um, just different sides of it. It just felt like intelligent philosophical curiosity. And he's not afraid to ask like certain questions or make you ask and answer particular questions about like religion, philosophy and whatnot. Now, a lot of funny moments in here, all of them or a lot of them involves Wayne, obviously. A lot of cute moments in here, a lot of them or all of them involves um, Steris, which is my favorite character. Steris is my favorite character. Like in this book, she's no longer a damsel, but she's still in distress. Not because she needs to be saved or and she needs anyone to rescue her, but because she has anxiety. Wayne is a close second. They're basically 1A, 1B. I, I love Wayne, how he is written in the book or in, in the entire series because a lot of the times he's very funny, but he could also be annoying. I feel how the other characters in the book feel about Wayne because he he is like an awesome character. He's funny, he's smart, his, he is uh, witty. He also has like a big heart, but he could also be annoying. Like a lot of his like fart jokes can be too much. It's like, oh, okay, let's, let's tone down with the fart jokes. But with that being said, it, it sort of like makes you feel how like Marasi or Wax feels about Wayne. He has like, annoying qualities but you sort of like tolerate it because again in in the grand scheme of things he's an awesome human being so yeah but there's a lot of like eh, somewhat rhythm of war moments in here so if you you like that all the sciency and experiment t type of uh, chapters you're gonna love this there's a few in here which are very satisfying very very satisfying um and it sort of makes me excited about like the future of the Cosmere and how all of this is just going to like come together. Ooh, chills. The entire time I was geeking out, trying to figure out like who's who or like the, the different connections and different clues that we get in this book in terms of like just figuring out like the big picture of the Cosmere and how it all relates together. I had like a blast just trying to figure shit out, trying to be a detective. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of mysteries in this book. So if you like detective work, yeah. Oh, one more thing. There's CGI in here. Now, if you're asking, how is there CGI in a, in a book? Read it, you'll find out. There's CGI in here. I'm gonna put on my hat and we're gonna talk spoilers. Okay, like the next part's gonna be spoilers. So if you haven't read the book, yeah, peace, I guess. Um, I'll see you, like come back here if after you finish reading it. But if you haven't, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. I'll uh, see you next time, so peace. Now, for those of you who have read the book, we're gonna talk about some specific shit. Okay, I have a list here. Okay, first of all, Moonlight. I, I was like trying to figure out who this person is for like, for a long time until, cause there were like clues. So until she cursed, she was like night. And I was like, okay, so where was that from? Cause if you've read other Cosmere books, so every every series, every world, every planet has their, has their own curses. So in Mistborn Era 1, either it's Lord uh, by the Lord Ruler in Era 2, like rusts and ruin, or ruin, preservation, you know, those are the curse words. In um, Stormlight, it's, well, storms. And in Warbreaker, you have, I think, I believe, colors. Emperor's Soul, I think, is like one of the best um, novellas out there. It's set in the world of Elantris. The curse word 
that they used a lot in that book is uh, knights. So I was like, okay, she's from Emperor's Soul. Is she the main character? Is she uh, shy or whatever? I'm like 95% sure that she's that character, which I love because I really loved Emperor's Soul and I've been wanting to see more of that character. Page 151. So also like I have like mad tabs in this book, dog. I, dude, there's like, this book is awesome. Uh, I don't know who says this, I think Moonlight. So she says, like talking about trial or autonomy, some worlds have entire pantheons that are all versions of her, each of which has a distinct personality and identity. So I'm thinking, are we talking Warbreaker? Because if, fuck, there's gonna be a lot of spoilers in here, dog. So. I'm gonna talk about spoilers uh, regarding the entire Cosmere, so Pantheon. And the only Pantheon that I could think of is, um, again, Warbreaker. Perhaps Elantris, some of it. Let me know what you think about that uh, because I'm not the best at figuring shit out or like figuring uh, relations in terms of uh, the entire Cosmere. How does the timeline work? So is this happening the same time as Stormlight is happening? Because I I'm confused because like Hoyt is everywhere. Maybe I should go uh, online to figure out like timelines or is it even clear? Like the timelines in terms of like, okay, did this happen first? Is this happening at the same time? I don't know. It's so awesome that there's still characters from Mistborn Era 1. You know, it's kind of like watching or reading Boruto. And you look forward when, like, people from, like, Naruto show up. You know, from, like, the, the, the OG crew. When they show up, it's like, oh, yeah, it's awesome. Shit's about to go down. So it's always nice to have that. If you're going to comment anything uh, specific, uh, put spoiler tags on it because again the first half of this book has no spoilers for this book It has spoilers for like other Cosmere related books But yeah, just you know to give people a warning give them a spoiler tag. So yeah, thanks Wait, so autonomy is a shard, right? Because I'm confused. Fuck. So twin souls. What is that? Aether. What is Aether? Is that an Elantris? I feel like I heard that somewhere. Maybe Rhythm of War, maybe Stormlight. What is Aether? Because I know there is like this, there's sort of like an unknown element or liquid-ish thing that they found when they took, was it Uruthuru? Wait, no, no, wait. When they took like the kingdom thingy in uh, Stormlight, they found, is it Aether? Aether? Is it? Is that it? Now, what is that? It's because the way they say it in the book, it's it's much older or it predated uh, the shattering of Adenalcium. So is it, does it come from a being like Adenalcium? So it just, it makes the world a uh, bigger, I guess, the, the, the lore and the history. It just expands it because, you know, like for the entire time, we're thinking Adonalsium, that, that's it. He's like the, the being, the god. And then shattering, boop, 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 shards, whatever. And we all thought that there's like, that Adonalsium is like the oldest being or whatnot. Um, or wait, I don't know, dog. There's so many questions. I'm not going to figure out the answer, but it's it's nice talking about it and trying to process it. Another thing, I mean, I like the appearance of Chauta or Chuta, Shota, the, the thing that Lopin eats a lot, the, the, the little bread thing, uh, the Herdaz, like, yeah, the traditional food from Herdaz, like Lopin's favorite. It's in here, like Wayne was e eating it. So I was like, fuck, that's awesome. I don't know. I, again, as I've said, there's a lot of Easter eggs in this book. A lot of like, uh, like little awesome moments that if you've read the other Cosmere books, you're like, aha, I know where that's from. Page 249, Wax realizes the villain is Mo 
that was really funny when the villain was like monologuing and wax realized the the villain was monologuing so he just sort of left quietly <laughs> that was brilliant the the mystery in like the end of rhythm of war so if you haven't read that read it what are you doing here if you haven't read rhythm of war i told you there's gonna be spoilers but the ending of rhythm of war is like they they're talking about uh thydekar or like the leader of the ghost bloods and they also call thydekar the lord of scars i mean who else could it be like who else could it be who else could the lord of scars be and in this book it's pretty much confirmed yeah that was kelsier i love uh kelsier's character because it's uh his entire character is, well, number one, there's always another secret. And number two is he's a survivor. He survives that what he, that's what he does. So I feel like this is just an excellent decision from Brandon Sanderson to like pick Kelsey and all that bullshit that he brings along with him. I feel he's the perfect uh, choice to be like sort of almost an immortal in the Mistborn series. So I, I'm looking forward to, honestly, I'm looking forward to him teaming up with Kaladin to fight autonomy and shit. But I, I don't think that's going to happen. If there's going to be a world hopper from Roshar, I think it's going to be Yasna. It, most likely to world hop to Skadriel or something. Although I don't know how that works. How invested is Yasna and in how much she is connected to like the um, Roshar? I don't know. Ooh, I love the entire uh, not wax and not Wayne deba debacle. The, the whole fight scene um, involving that and just that moment when they switched weapons. That was like so dope. I... Dude, that was amazing. Now, the advancement in te technology surrounding metallurgy is just terrifying because of just, like, how fast technology is just evolving. And, like, in here, they have, like, they're starting to, like, basically have nukes. And one of the things that I really noticed is, like, how the problems of the past is it's the same problems in, in, this, in this world, in this era. It's just, it's just wearing a different hat. It, it felt like it's just history repeating itself. And th these people are making the same mistakes that their ancestors had made in the past. And it's terrifyingly accurate. Now, I'm going to be reading Emperor Soul very soon. Um, because, again, it's one of my favorite novellas. And I need to confirm some of my theories because uh, it's going to take me a while to read the entire, like, to read Warbreaker, Elantris. Although I will be reading them soon. Because, I don't know, I just, I'm so excited for the future of the Cosmere. This this is such an awesome book. Like, dude, look at the fucking uh, tabs. <laughs> Let me know what you think about the book. Or, like, how the era was wrapped up and uh, how he was able to tie up those loose ends and what you liked, disliked about the book or the series, the era. I was going to wait for that to finish, but whatever. I, I think it adds ambience and it adds character to like my outro. I'm a big fan of Brandon Sanderson and like the Mistborn series, Stormlight Archive. So this was incredibly satisfying for me to read. Uh, so yeah, let me know your thoughts about the book or the series, the era, how it was wrapped up. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you soon. Peace.